It used to be a situation where, you know, you could recruit your team. You knew they were going to be around for you know, two, three, maybe four years. It was yeah. tough to transfer with the one-year sit-out. And, you know, you could you could set your roster and maybe take a few one-year sit-out guys and have right. them ready for when the next guys leave. Now it's kind of – there's no real rhyme or reason to anything. Like you yeah. can try to, like, plug and play now. Plug and play. And, um, yeah. you know, Leonel, it, it's, it's actually great for the kids. They have a chance to not have to rush to the G okay. League or the over – you know, whatever those leagues yeah. are. You don't mm-hmm. have to go play overseas for short money to try to get to the next like level. Yeah. So it's actually a nice opportunity for them to, to have a decent life. Yeah. I mean – I'm at UMass, mm-hmm. and Marcus Cam is the number one player in the country, and we're having hockey pucks at the dining commons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Now the yep. guys can get, you know, they can order out a little yeah, bit. So right, it's, um, right. it's a good situation. You have to obviously be able to um, weed through what's going on and, yeah. and be um, be ahead of the curve, which yeah. I think the good thing about a place like Creighton is I think Coach Mack and the staff and the, and the um, administration have put themselves in a position to at least – recognize what's going on yeah. and have a game plan moving forward, yeah. which, you know, I'm happy to be a yeah. part of that. All right, welcome to Let It Fly show. Of course, waiting for the new bar in downtown to open Let It Fly Sports Bar in the Capital District. June 16th, we'll be there. I am Michael Severe. Got it on my right. It's Josh Jones, of course, of Central and Creighton. University. Yeah, university. <laughs> Uni- is it University of Creighton or is it Creighton University? You know, it's uh, Creighton University. Because that's important sometimes. No, you know, you're places. right. It's a big sometimes deal. sometimes I'll try to Google the school yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll put the university yeah, last yeah, yeah, yeah. and that school does not come yeah. up. I always say like, yeah, you know, right. they call it NU. I'm like, no, it's University of Nebraska. I mean, exactly. it's CU though. It's Creighton yeah. University. Um, again, I remind <laughs> you, go to the website for Let It Fly Sports Bar because we're going to have some great deals there very soon. For example... You can get $125 worth of gift certificates for just 100 bucks. Man. So saving you 25 bucks on great food and drinks as well. That's going to be on the website. Hey, Again, let it tell fly you this. I did it. I had to sneak down there, man. I, I did, heard that. I, I had to. What did it look like? Man. They're it, about a month away, man. It went from 70 it's a month TVs and five to days. 90 TVs. Oh, really? It went from 370 to 405 in seating. Wow. Um, I seen the commercial kitchen. Nice. It's almost a nice. million dollars, mm, mm. and the food is going to be ready for the I city. I know, I know. I cannot wait. June, June 16th, uh, that big tournament that happens in downtown is going to be happening the first day, and yes. at the same time, Let It Fly Sports Bar can't will open wait. up as well. I can't wait for that. I can't wait to go down there and watch some, some NFL when football right. season comes wrong. <laughs> uh, busy show for you. Busy show. Busy. So Derek Kellogg, the brand new assistant coach. Legend. At, who played guard at Memphis? I mean, excuse me, at, 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 at uh, Massachusetts, UMass. coached all over the place. Coach Memphis uh, was a head coach. All that stuff. Um, he'll be joining us. Derek uh, Kellogg will. Also, we're getting from St. Thomas. You remember St. Thomas I'm winning a, a zone. yeah, North winning Omaha a, a state title there at Millard North, and also Francisco Farabello, a two-time guest now, will be joining us from Argentina. So that's going to be cool as well. We'll yeah, chat right. with him. Lots going on, I right? Know, um, know. We had talked a lot about what was going to happen with. The overall team at the end of the season, like if they could bring everybody back, I they know. were this close to a Final or, Four. Yeah. R two is gone. Baylor decides to stay, yep. and now Kaluma putting obviously he's in for a draft. But even if he doesn't go to the NBA, he's still going to hit he the portal. There. Um, there's a I've I've talked to about a half a dozen people in the last couple of days about this. People who've covered the team, um, people really close to the team, yep. and there's something amok. It's got to be. I mean, I know no, fans I that are upset yeah. about why would this guy, yeah. why would R2 leave, of course, right. and why would Kaluma leave? Right. There are different situations, obviously, but your, yeah. your thoughts on it. Well, my thoughts are this. Um, it's easy to be a fan and look at the situation for what it is and be like, oh, man, like, they're the problem, mm-hmm. you know? And the, then fans, the, the, kid, the, the kids are the problem. The kids are okay. the problem. Right, right. And then it's also easy to be a fan and say, well, what's going on with Coach Mack? Right, right. The way that I see it is like this. Um, I feel like sometimes you can be in a situation where everything is going good and you actually quit paying attention to the things that matter the most. The details. The details. Mm-hmm. And I think that the details were lost between Coach Mack and Art and Ryan. Mm, okay. I mean, the relationship looked great, you know, when you're winning. But I just feel like something behind the circumstances of women winning, there was a disconnect. We can talk. We can talk about well, money. But art, but art seems that makes sense. Yeah. When you watched him play, I don't care if it was his freshman year or this past year. Right. He always kind of felt out of sync with the offense. He, he always did. did. He did. Yeah. I mean, he so did. I understand that. And, and by personality, like art is a real funny dude. Yeah, yeah. He's an interpersonal guy. But I'm just saying, like, there's a, a there's a there's a disconnect, like. 
I mean, it's easy to say, oh, man, like somebody give you a, a large amount of money, or R2 left or this guy left. I don't. I think you can throw any type of money at somebody if the relationship is there. It's worth way more. Sure. I don't think it's about the money. No, I, I know it's not yeah. about them. And I and I don't right. think it's coach. I'm not saying it's Coach Mac. Yeah. I'm not saying it's R two or Art. I'm just saying there's a disconnect to where there wasn't a player coach relationship. That's what I think. Yeah. It, it, uh, the right kind of relationship. The right kind. Um, the R two is the one. That's the one that surprises so many people because all the parts of it. Right. He had playing time. Yeah. He was playing well. He played the most. Coach talked so much about him and how good he was. Right. Seeming like they had a good relationship. Right. And again, like I said with Kaluma, he always kind of looked out of place right. sometimes in the offense. So that one right. I understand. The one that bothers people the most is, is Nimhart because he didn't end up going to a place right. where there was a ton of money. Exactly. If you go, if you go to say you go to Arizona, yep. they obviously have the whatever Pac-12 money there is. It's football yep. money. Yep. You go to a place like Gonzaga, yeah, there's some money there, but yeah. it's not like it would be at a football nah, school. Exactly. He could have got that money here. He could have. That's what frustrates people. Yeah, and, and for me, man, um, the way that I think about it, um, it's almost like I guarantee there was a, just the outside of the coach pride side. I mm-hmm. think it's just as a man, just playing for Coach Mack in the past. I know yeah. that he's big on fostering relationships, okay. and I guarantee he questioned himself like, "Well, what was I not doing right?" Right. And then he'll probably go in the circle of saying, "Well, I felt like I did everything right," mm-hmm. but then he'll go back to saying, "What did not do right?" right? I think he cares more about them, the person, than the basketball players, and I think that is. Something that is probably going to stick with him for a while before he actually let it go. Yeah. Just knowing who he is as a person. Then the other part is uh, Cockburner is getting some interest. Yeah, some word today. Uh, Joel Lorenzi says I'm not going to say I don't know. If, I ain't going to say I don't think he's not ready. Yeah, but like I'm not. I'm not sure his game fits the NBA the way it is now for big men. Go. But I will say well, this. I'm sorry to cut you off, bro. Well, bad. Joel Lorenzi, um, you know, obviously covers Creighton for the World Herald. Mentioned he always had the feeling that Cock was coming back, but he said, you know what? I've got a feeling now more that even if he's not considered one of the one or first, second round, that he might go anyway hmm. just to start his professional career. Okay. Playing in the G League, overseas, whatever else. So that would be – now, if he left for that reason, right. that would be a little strange because you can make some yeah, cash here, right. stay and get better. Yeah. Um, but he's getting married. I mean, yeah. he's got a whole – I know. Start and your he, life, Yeah, man. right. And you he, also got a grown-ass man. That's why I'm about to say you got to think about the personal uh, circumstances of people too. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know? Yeah. And for me, uh, honestly, like, I, I think that with his circumstance, if there's anything about the NBA, I think that is uh, brilliant to definitely test the waters when you like sure, yeah. the two times Big East player of the year. A defensive, defensive player of the year. Sorry, yeah. defensive yeah. player of the sure. year. But um, obviously we wish him well, yes. but um, I think he should come back. Oh, I, there's no doubt. S- yeah. Skill-wise. Yeah, and he comes back, and with the way it's set up, yeah. with the guys that are coming in, this is still a team that it's a top 20 yeah. team. Maybe if everybody came back, they were a top 10. Right. I think with everybody that they're adding, yeah. they could be a top My 20 team for sure. My forecast, he yeah. out, bro. You think he go? Oh yeah, he out. really? Cox gone? You think? Yeah, bro. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. If now. I'm it, wrong, it surprises me. me. It surprises me because I think he should be back. But yeah, if he goes, he goes. You got to do what you do for your life. I feel you. You know, so that's yeah. how it works. Coming up next, new assistant coach for Creighton, Ryan Kellogg. Excuse me, Derek Kellogg. A lot of Ryan's. Yeah, I know. Derek Kellogg <laughs> joining good. us next on Let It Fly Show. Welcome back to Let It Fly Podcast. We are joined by the newest assistant coach with Creighton. Joined by Derek Kellogg, joining us here. How you feeling? I'm feeling fantastic. This has been a, a great transition, great people, yeah. um, an amazing city. Yeah. You know, I'm so impressed with uh, Omaha and the uh, downtown area. Obviously, Creighton um, has been a, a, a whirlwind, but it's been a fantastic transition. And just uh, really happy to be here and happy to uh, be part of the Creighton family. I remember you as a point guard <laughs> at UMass, <laughs> but you've had a whole long career after that. Um, just kind of talk a little bit about all the moving, the, the being coaching in different places, and and how that's uh, kind of grown you. And well, normally when people uh, say they remember me, that means they're, they're around my age, which is a, yeah. a cool thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been fortunate um, as a player and, and, and a coach to not have to move as much as most people, um, especially after we you know had a family and, and had our son Max. Yeah. Um, but you know, I started at UMass as a player in the '90s with John Calipari. We rose to number one in the country for yeah. a couple of years. I. Uh, you know, fed the ball to Marcus Camby and Lou yeah. Rowe and Dana Dingle and Dante Bright and, and those guys and, and really had a great career and a great experience at UMass. So yeah. that was that was kind of home. I was from yeah. Springfield, Massachusetts, right down the road, the, the that's, Hall of Fame. and the Hall ba- of Fame. Yeah, exactly. So that was a cool experience. So I was yeah. really happy with my decision. And from there, I decided after watching guys like Bruiser Flint and Bill Baino and, yeah. 
you know, John Robick and Ed Schilling and, and guys that were assistants become head coaches. I felt like that was a career path that would fit me. You know, yeah. it gives you the competitive juices. Right. Mm. Yeah, um, right, right. You know, I couldn't really touch the rim, so playing in the NBA was probably out. Um, so I figured, you know, college coaching would be a, a great kind of jettison into the next phase of my life to be competitive, to be yeah. involved in that. And, you know, I was fortunate my first job was um, doing the radio for UMass, but then I my first real job was at George Mason. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah with uh, Jim Laranega his yep. first couple of years. Yeah. And it was a great learning experience for me to go from, you know, working for John Calipari, playing for him, to... Uh, a guy who did things a little bit differently to see right. how things were done. And, you know, we had, we had some success there. Right? We went to the NCAA tournament in our second year. Um, Coach L had great infectious personality. Oh, it was yeah. great to be around. So that was a really cool experience. And then it's a lucky guy, man. Yeah. yeah. Good coach. yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go over the coaching tree in a minute yeah, here, yeah. but yeah. And then I went with John Robick to Youngstown state to get some recruiting experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that lasted eight months. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I've been to Youngstown. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Coach Cal called and uh, invited me to come down to look at a place called Memphis. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And um, you know, I took the job at Memphis, yeah. and it, it was eight amazing years. Of, that was my favorite time. Yeah, basketball. right. Because that's when I was coming. That up. was good. Okay, basketball, so yeah. you're a young buck then. You know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's rare that for me. I'm more excited about a coach than I am the recruiting players. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of legendary love around this, man. Um, kind of going back to uh, Marcus Camby. Tell me this. Um, what was it like playing with, with Camby? I mean, I had his jersey as a kid, you know? Like, I mean, have you ever played with uh, players who were like, you know, everybody got that one player who they say, that's the best player I ever played with. Do you feel like that about him? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, Marcus Camby ended up being player of the year in the country. Yep. He was a guy that changed the complexion of every game he was a part of because yeah. he, he just on was – both ends. Yeah, yeah both ends. He Seven scored. foot. Yeah. Could, could um, you know, dominate the game without right. really scoring, without needing the basketball, which is, you know, kind of right. rare in this day and age. Um, so he was a, a phenom. So we went from a, a program where we were making the NCAA tournament every year and having a chance to get to the round of 16 or, or 32 or whatever it may be. And then you had a guy like Marcus Camby. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're beating North Carolina, Arkansas, Kansas, and, yeah. and having a chance to yeah. right. become one of those programs. So, right. And then you throw in a guy by the name of Lou Rowe, yep. Yeah. Yep. who – had 32 and 17 Man. against North Carolina, dominated, yeah. you know, Arkansas. And mm. so those two guys were probably one of the better front lines to play in college basketball, yeah. in right. my opinion, even to this day. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so yeah, I was lucky sure. to be with those guys. They they helped me, um, you know, kind of elongate my career. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank right. you. For <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not yeah. I'm new to this. You know, yeah, 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 true to it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that, was a, that was a great time. I met yeah. my wife at UMass. Oh, we, wow. Okay. You know, had a great experience, a lot of friends, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. you know, long term relations were, were built there. So what, what, was, so, what was his drive? Like, what made him, aside from his uh, freakish nature frame, like, what was his motivation every day to come br bring what he brought? Well, Marcus was um, just a unique talent. Yeah. You know, he went from a point guard as a freshman in high school. How tall was he? Well, he was six feet, six two as a freshman, and oh then he grew goodness. throughout his time. So Man. he was kind of an unheralded recruit who worked hard and got better. Yeah. And then by the time it's all said and done, you have a seven foot guy that can handle the basketball wow. and make <laughs> David plays. Robinson. Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then it's him and Allen Iverson for Player of the Year in '96. Yeah, yeah, yeah. best draft class ever. Yeah, that's, that's a good I, draft class. I, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Okay, there. Yeah, just check yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, that was a good, good time. We yeah. were sitting around before this. It shows you how it's about four degrees of separation. In this job, right? You know so many people. How much did when you were looking at Creighton? Did you did you lean on Ryan, Coach Miller, that you knew from from Memphis? Well, it's ironic because um, you know I love UMass. It was a great yeah. transition to go from LIU Brooklyn. Uh, Frank Martin was amazing to, to yeah, bring him in my family sure. back. But yeah. you know when Ryan kind of called and just mentioned. Great! It, it yeah. didn't even come out. And say, yes, I'm here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So um, didn't take much. No. For and, sure. And, and, you know, yeah. I have a lot of respect for Ryan. We we had a great relationship at Memphis, um, and um, you know, I always thought that someday we'd be able to work together again. Yeah, and, I know. Um, you, I feel you. And I, yeah. you know, it never really transpired. When yeah. I ended up being a head coach, I tried to hire him or wanted to a few. Yeah, times. but he was doing good. Where yeah, he was, he was at. already making too much money. Yeah, and, yeah right. Doing I'll some things. You. Yeah, right. Yeah. So um, that never really transpired. Yeah, I thought maybe someday he'd be a head coach and I'd be yeah. the old guy to come back and help him help a little him bit. Yeah. yeah, right, right. But um, this this was like a perfect storm, perfect case scenario. Nice. Um, coach McDermott. Um, I've always watched him from afar. Okay. We've, we've coached against each other some. Yeah, um, like Iowa State days. No, they beat us by about. 
I think it was around 20. Oh, you Creighton remember versus that. UMass at, yeah. in, in uh, Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Um, and so um, I've always uh, kind of respected his offense, how sure. he ran his program. Yeah. And to be able to work for a guy like him and have a, a guy like Ryan around to sure. um, I lean on and yeah. really respect, it's a, it's a great working environment. Yeah. Yeah. So there's another special time I want to talk about, 2008. No oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go there. You know how much money I lost on <laughs> oh, Derek Rose not making free throws, but, bro? But let me still t- mad about let that. Me, let me tell you how it ties into the story for me. Right. I'm a senior in high school. Yeah. I'm at Central High School. And um, at this time, I was blessed to be the best player in the state. You know, doing my... You know, doing thank, thank you, you buddy. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I need to, I, I wish I still play sometimes. I wish they were the best player, yeah. player in Massachusetts. So okay. for me, like, I get a call from, I'm in my homeroom, and uh, my college basketball, or my high school coach calls me, and he says, hey, Josh, a, um, uh, he texts me, and says, I'm, I'm going to give you a pass to come downstairs, but don't tell none of your teammates where you're going. So I go downstairs in the basement, and there's uh, tape and duct tape over the doors and I peek in there I said oh that's Kansas <laughs> Kansas practice at my high school oh, okay. Oh, okay. you know right. and so I had a conversation with uh, Chalmers and the coaches and all that type of stuff yeah, that's cool and um, it was just a good experience for me but I'm the same age as some of these guys like Derrick Rose and things like that um, so that's like that what drew me Background. in but I say that to say what a two part question starting with the game itself um Reflecting back on it, what was one of your biggest, like, takeaways to remember that 08 season? You know what? That was a culmination of years of work. So, for us, it was like this, like, firestorm to the national championship game. You know, we put in a lot of time to get Memphis kind of up and running. Yeah. It wasn't as easy as people think. You know, there was yeah. guys going pro early, never came to college. There was rules back then where kids could commit and sign, but they could go right to the NBA. So we lost like Amari Stott and Myron. Oh, right, yeah, sure. right, right, right. A lot right. of different guys. So it was right. it was not as easy and as fast moving as we would have liked, but yeah. it ended up being where we had this amazing team ready to go, and then we inserted a kid by the name of Derek Rose yeah. from Simeon in Chicago. And so we had a lot of older yeah. guys that had been through the battle. You recruited D Rose. Uh, you know, I had a hand in, in, yeah, in you his recruit. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you had like Joey Dorsey from Dorsey. Baltimore and Antonio Anderson from Massachusetts Man. and D Rose from C- Chicago yeah. and CDR. CDR. And, Dozier and, and, and then we had a great bench of, you know, Sean yeah. Taggart, Donnell Mack, uh, Andre Allen. So yep. that team was built to try to win a national championship. Yeah. Specifically. So specifically. And, yeah. you know, we went 33-1, and one, I yep. think it was. A, you know, a tough year to be an assistant, 33-1. Mm. and one. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got to find game, reasons to get on guys. Yeah, the only game we lost was actually against Tennessee at home that year. They were two, we were one. Yeah. And, oh, an in-state one. Yeah, and it was yeah. uh, Dane Bradshaw does the SEC network yeah. now. And you yeah. know, those, a lot of Memphis kids around that. So and I was, bet there's a lot of reminders, huh? Yeah, but yeah. The, I'll tell you what, the, the game in the city yeah. was like uh, the game, you know, it sure. sold out. So for it was good sure. for recruiting, good for the city. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the national championship game, it's, I don't know, a minute 50 left, and I'm waving my wife down, come yeah, down, yeah, you know, the yeah, family. It's a wrap. Yeah, 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 it's a wrap. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was a wrap. Missed Me a few too. free throws. Yeah. And yeah. Next thing you know, it's not a wrap. Go sit back down. Yeah. We're, going, we're going to overtime. Yeah. Hit that three. I yeah. mean, what was the energy like? Um, I know as a coaching staff, you guys are prepared to go into overtime, but do you think it took the life out of the team? Yeah, I, I actually do. It felt like we had a national championship won. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was kind of in the bag, and then a few – Tough circumstances led to, you know, Chalmers knocking down at three, and yeah. then Joey Dorsey followed out of the off, game, yep. and then, you know, they, they ended up beating us. Run, yeah. um, and, you know, from a personal standpoint, it was the most amazing yeah, for thing sure. as an assistant. And then I already kind of had a feeling I was going to get the head job at UMass. So yeah. the, the the blows of losing a national championship game, but also your first crack at being a head coach. Yeah. You know, Kind of sullied those wounds pretty quickly. It does. You know, it's because yeah, sure. uh, you know what it takes, and it's so hard to get a, yeah. a head coaching job in, in college basketball, especially yeah. at that level. Yeah, and then I played at UMass, so yeah, it was, sure. you know, it was kind of a surreal win loss deal. But I'll tell you what, the uh, the walking around Cal, yeah, you know, he likes to walk around. Coach, so we're yeah, big walkers, okay. you know. Like we go, yeah. and I would walk with him in, to walk around San Antonio yeah. when you're oh. playing for the national yeah. championship. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like a picture taker. Yeah. You know, like, got the camera going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but he's like family to me, Coach yeah. Gallon and, and his family. Is that family. group uh, pretty tight still? No, uh, totally. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, we're all pretty pretty tight, and yeah. um, you know, he'd still come up to Amherst and visit when I was the head coach at UMass. I took him for pizza not too long ago. Uh, yeah. Up there, and um, just an amazing guy, family. Yeah. 
And um, it went from like coach, mentor, friend to sure. like father figure to yeah. We're out, I'm not sure exactly which yeah. one of those right now. Now, but, um, yeah, but yeah. It, it's it's cool. Coach yeah. Kellogg joining us here on the Let It Fly Show. How much has NIL changed your job as a recruiter? Oh, good question. And then also the job of keeping. I mean, add the portal in there too. NIL and portal, keeping kids, retraining them, and recruiting them. How much has it changed? Well, here's the deal. You see the bags under my eyes? I see. Yeah, <laughs> those in uh, right. You think you got a kid until somebody throws some huh? money out there? Okay, that's new. <laughs> You know, it, it used to be a situation where, you know, you could recruit your team. You knew they were going to be around for you know, two, three, maybe four years. It was yeah. tough to transfer with the one-year sit-out. And, you know, you could you could set your roster and maybe take a few one-year sit-out guys and have right. them ready for when the next guys leave. Now it's kind of – there's no real rhyme or reason to anything. Like you yeah. can try to, like, plug and play now. Plug and play. And, um, yeah. you know, Leonel, it, it's, it's actually great for the kids. They have a chance to not have to rush to the G okay. League or the over, you know, whatever those leagues yeah. are. You don't mm-hmm. have to go play overseas for short money to try to get to the next like level. Yeah. So it's actually a nice opportunity for them to, to have a decent life. Yeah. I mean, I'm at UMass, mm-hmm. and Marcus Cam is the number one player in the country, and we're having hockey pucks at the dining commons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Now the yep. guys can get, you know, they can order out a little yeah, bit. So right, it's, um, right. it's a good situation. You have to obviously be able to um, weed through what's going on and, yeah. and be um, be ahead of the curve, which yeah. I think the good thing about a place like Creighton is I think Coach Mack and the staff and the, and the um, administration have put themselves in a position to at least – recognize what's going on yeah. and have a game plan moving forward, yeah. which, you know, I'm happy to be a yeah. part of that. I'm not going to say now. I think personally, I believe that Coach Mack has such great integrity that he was one of the last of the dying breed that didn't have to, like, uh, adapt to what's going on now with the recruiting portal uh, to get kids. But I think when you got like a a Nimhard and the Kaluma, that was a great experience optimistically for him to kind of adjust and understand that he's he's always going to be the same guy. Mm -hmm. But I think that's when great guys like yourself, Coach Miller, um, um, Courtney uh, Williams and the rest of the staff, I think that he's plugged you guys in as great counsel to him to teach him how to navigate. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I'm kind of new to this game a tad too because, you know, I was at LIU Brooklyn where we – you know, we weren't really in that NIL game and the, yeah. the portal. We were we were more fighting to keep the to guys keep the versus guys. to get it losing yeah, them. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then at UMass, we were kind of yeah. uh, figuring it out a Word. little bit more yeah. than being ahead of the curve. So I'm right. learning as it goes, but yeah. I'm still a relationship guy. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, there's some stuff that goes yeah. with that. But, you know, if you can have good relationships with yeah. the kids and the people around them, you can overcome whether somebody's saying A, B, or C. Yeah. Put them in a good situation. We're playing a long-term game here. Mm-hmm. You know, are you... Worried about today, tomorrow, or the next twenty years, and that's cliche. Yeah, it's true. But, kid, but yeah. people, kids don't think about that. Well, they need to because yeah. when you graduate from college and you've bounced around seven times, who's there where's for your you? Network? Yeah, yeah, who's your network? Exactly. And um, I'm a big network guy. I love to take yeah. care of the kids that I've been around. I mean, you can go back to Chaz Williams, Caddy yep. Lane, yep. Raphael Putney. Man. Even the guys at LIU. Man. I mean, we're still. Chaz Williams' car is parked in my house right now. Damn. Oh, really? That's solid. I gotta start that thing like once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's still Make good. Make sure it's still so, jumping. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wish there was more people that were. Um, advising the kids that yeah. would look more long term like it's not the dollar today it could be the dollar 20 years or a relationship a For personal sure. relationship with yeah. somebody and what's that worth i you know in, in different junctures in my career i could have taken jobs for just money yeah and the relationships of the people i was around the happiness of my family and the success of the people around me superseded maybe a few yeah. dollars here and there you yeah, know, and, and and some of them were big dollars. Yeah, for sure. So, um, happiness to me is number one. You have one life; it doesn't and, last forever. Yeah. And have some happiness, have a good experience, and yeah. and, and try to get to where you want to get to. Yep. Before we let you go. Give us your thoughts on Jonathan Lawson and Brock Vice, two new guys come in. That ju- I know you saw Vice play at the AAU stuff. You know a little bit about Lawson. What do you think about those guys? Yeah, so uh, Brock to me is a, a nice long term uh, a piece, like for sure, six um, ten guy that can shoot the ball. Mm-hmm. A little more athletic than you would see on video. Great attitude, great character, yeah. hard work. I think he fits everything that Coach Mack and his staff has established here over the last, you know, 13, 12, 13 sure. years. Um, and if he's a guy that wants to stay the course and continue to get better, I think at some point he could be one of those guys that could come in and start and have a chance. Yeah. Um, love him as a person. His yeah. family's great. Yep. You know, he's come through the Memphis basketball world. Yeah, for sure. Guys we know, yeah. so he's got some toughness to him. Yeah. And then Lawson um, – you know, when I was kind of in Memphis, Keelan, the dad was kind of right. around yeah. as a younger guy. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then I, you know, fast forward however many years and he's got, yeah. 
you know, on the home visit, there's four, six, nine dudes walking in the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> so, uh, That's crazy. Uh, he, um, him and, him and uh, his wife have done a fantastic job with all yeah. four of those kids. And Jonathan, being the youngest, has a knowledge of the game. Yeah. He can play multiple positions, and I think he's a winner. Right. And um, from what I've seen here, we've got a bunch of guys that are winners and committed to Creighton in the community. Yeah. And when I talk long-term in relationships, that's one of those things that I think yeah. he, uh, he, he, he's, he's that. Man, he should write a book. <laughs> Dang. Are, are you uh, your wife? Say that to my wife. <laughs> so is your wife and kid are they here now? So they're not here. They're visiting not, yeah. early June. Okay. Uh, my okay. son's finishing up. He's at a, one it's of gotta those. It's got to be tough. We got to bring him by the bar. Let it, we got to bring yeah, him by the bar. Yeah, yeah. 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 opening yeah. night. They're, yeah, they're sure. here um, the 5th to the 15th, and my son is playing in those Nepsack, yep. which is the New England oh, okay. basketball tournament. So the yep. coach was nice enough to put him on the varsity for those two weekends. Mm-hmm. He's my lead recruiter in the uh, New England, New yep. York area. He knows every kid up there. No doubt. He's like, why are you not recruiting yeah. this right. guy? And I'm like, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah I know, so, right? Can't recruit them all. And my son. wife is a basketball wife. We met at UMass. We've been that's huge. together apart. You know, like yeah. not when I so say that's apart, where all your success comes from. Yeah. 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 So I'm in Memphis for a while. She was a immigration paralegal in New York City. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then we, um, you know, we got to uh, we lived together in Amherst, and right. she understands the business. So it's one of those things with, especially this day and age, you have to have a family that understands. And they're I couldn't ask for anything more. Put it that way. Right. That's cool. If you ever look for any uh, food tips, any place to go. I I got that part of the city wired. So if well, you need anything, just just call I chef. I get you a chef. I get you whatever you need. <laughs> that part I can handle. I appreciate that. If you saw the stomach walking in, you know. I've been <laughs> I got. I got. Hey, uh, there's a reason why I look like this, right. yeah. Coach. We appreciate hey, man, it. Thank, thank you, you so Omaha. Thank really you very much. Come back Omaha. anytime. That'd be great. Yeah, sounds great. Thank, thank you. Coach. Thank you. All right, joining us now on Let It Fly Show. Now a two-time guest on the show, Francisco Ferrabello, joining us from his home country of Argentina. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be home. You know, uh, got here yesterday after finals where they were crazy. Yeah. Hey, well, took what, the plane. Took the plane. Came straight here. Hey, what, what's the first thing that you you yeah. you did? You you obviously went to bed. I hope. <laughs> but when you woke up, what's yeah. the first thing you did? Uh, you know, when you got up. Since you I'm got home? just uh, having breakfast with my mom. You know. Nice. Uh, I can do it for for twenty days a year, and I, and I t- I try to take advantage of every day. So. That's the first thing I did. She always cook yeah. you breakfast in, right? Huh? She always cook you breakfast in, right? Yeah. Home yeah. cooked meals. That's what's up, man. <laughs> That's awesome. So you, you get back home, and obviously you're going to be back here in a, in a few weeks. What do you yeah. do to stay in shape? What, is there a gym for you to go to? Are there guys you can run with? How, how, by the way, Coach is over on the side over here just in case. Uh, so, no. I know. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, uh, I heard him. I heard <laughs> actually, actually the interview. I was, I was uh, able to see it, so I, I heard all the, the 50 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever he was there. Nice. Yeah. Uh, DK, I, I love DK. Man, he's, he's great. He's nice, gonna be nice. Great for us. Yeah, talk about what you, what you do to, to stay in shape in there and keep the game right. I mean t- – Today I, I was talking with Coach Jeremy, our strength and conditioning coach, yeah. and he was like, "You should take tomorrow tomorrow off." But which which I talked yesterday. So today uh, I didn't take it off. I went to the gym. Uh, I mean, there's not much that I can do. I'm from a small city, a small town. So I mean, I just get in the gym, and then there is a weight room so that I have access to. So I just basically keep doing what I was doing for the last two or three weeks in Omaha, but I do it over here. Hey, man, uh, I got to ask. I mean, it's been obviously a lot of news with Nimhard leaving, Kaluma leaving. Yeah. You know, kind of, you know, kind of talk about that. I mean, uh, what, what's your perspective on that? You know, before we, not even talking about the team now, just your take on what happened with Nimhard and uh, Kaluma. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, uh, like I support everybody, you know, if they think that's the best decision for them. And they think they're gonna have a better future doing that. Like it's it's okay. Like you you gotta always do what makes you happy. I'm I'm I see it that way. Um, so like I'm I'm glad I got to know those two guys. You know, uh, two unbelievable players, uh, even better even better people. So I wish them nothing but the best. And I, I mean, uh, I I think I created Coach DK was talking about long. Uh, term relationships, and I think with those two guys, you're always going to be in contact with. Were did you know uh, when um, did that Nimhart did it, that he was leaving, or did you find no. out like everybody no. else? I I had no idea. I mean, he he came up and talked to me after he told Coach Matt, mm. and I, that's that's and that I just said is what I told him. Like you got to do what what's best for you and what makes you happy. At the end of the day, it's it's your your life, your basketball career. If you think that's the best thing then go ahead and 
good luck. Yeah, and, sure. and you obviously have a perspective on that, being a guy who transferred himself. Um, what's if you're going to give him advice going to a new team? How do you how do you do that? It seems like that'd be hard to like make new friends and just get into that situation. How do you how did you do it? Unless you get in that bag. <laughs> no, play. go ahead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the thing is, so my dad played professional for 25 years, uh, so I, I'm used to, to be the new guy in different places. So it wasn't really hard for me. Oh, okay. I mean, but I like everybody has their own personality, so it's more challenging for some guys. But at the end of the day, you do it for the love of the game, and and or I, I, at least I hope so that that they will do it for the love of the game. You know. So, I mean, through basketball, you, you connect with people that yeah, for you're sure. going to be with for the rest of the life. So, yeah. Hey, so what? Um, so kind of talking about the guys now, have you had an opportunity to talk to any of your new teammates? Obviously, I know you met uh, Coach DK and all that type of stuff. Um, you build any rapport with the new squad or what? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was there when Stephen Ashworth was visiting us. Mm-hmm. Uh, great guy. I think he he's a Great working ethic, you know. Um, he's going to be one of the leaders for, for what I saw. And, uh, great player. I think he's going to fit us great. Uh, Jay Law, uh, met him as well. Uh, I think he's very, very talented. Um, I mean, I think he, he's ready to play some minutes. And then Brock, same thing. Like, I mean, a stretch four, stretch four or five. Uh, he can handle the ball. He sees the floor. So, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Yeah, for sure. I didn't have a chance to ask Coach Kellogg this, but being that you're around practice and you've seen these guys, if it was a little mini tournament with the coaches, the assistants, who would win one on one? With the coaches? Yeah, the coaches were playing each other. <laughs> I know Ryan Miller talks a lot about being a good ball player. I didn't see him. I'm not that old. But what, I mean, what do you what do you think? I mean, it's between Coach. DK and and Coach Jalen. Man, you trying to you you trying to win points. You tripping, bro. Coach, <laughs> you just, you Coach Miller your... dominating everybody, bro. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a big physical guy. How does how does he shoot it? Can he shoot no. it? No, unbelievable shooter. Okay, I'm, unbelievable shooter. Yeah. But, that, that's it. That's okay. Hey, you man. see how, like, <laughs> he's, he's about I it. wish I could shoot. I don't, I don't want nothing else. Dude, funny, <laughs> man. That's yeah, awesome. That's, hey, so tell me this. Uh, when you come back, um, what's the biggest thing that you think you're looking forward to? The lead, the lead eight. I mean, you got a taste of what's that? Four, it was yeah. this close, bro. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, like, what, what's, I, what's your thoughts? Like, I, 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 I'm telling people that uh, we're going to be in the same exact same situation that we left our last year, but it's going to be with a different result. Um, we just, we just got to buy all, buy in together and set it as a goal. And I think we can make it happen. Especially with the with the new guys we're, that we're bringing in, I think they they fit perfectly with our program and with our culture. So, why not? You got you got personal goals like for yourself, like any type yeah. of things you want to improve or what? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like I didn't have a great year shooting wise. I think I finished pretty strong. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. but I mean, talking with Coach Mac, you know, it happens pretty often with new people coming in since it's such a fast pace. It's different shots that 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 what what we were used to. So, um, I think my numbers are gonna go up, and you know, like just being sometimes a little more aggressive with the ball, especially because I can I I feel like I can really pass and being more aggressive. I try like I you you will attract more defense, and that's when you start looking for other people. So right, uh, yeah, yeah. Josh asked about you know doing what you can do this year. I would recommend just based off somebody who lives here in Nebraska all the time, beating Nebraska. That would be a good yeah, thing to do. Yeah, y'all was tripping. That would, uh, that'd be really good no, I'm not, for your I'm, fan yeah, base, yeah, I'm yeah. saying. I mean, the, the the stadium was unbelievable that night. It was – it was. we should have won. I mean, of course, they, they executed their plan if better than us and credits to them. But, I mean, yeah, like it's, it's one of those things that when you look back through the year, like we had such a great year and that's one of the things that we missed. So, yeah, I mean, next year we're going to prepare better, I'll, I'll say, and, and, and hopefully get it, go home with a, with a W. For sure. I got, I got uh, personally one more for you. Yep. UConn won it all. Is there any type of motivation? I know this, it's like a rivalry there. I mean, despite yeah. them winning it all, like mm-hmm. what type of energy are you uh, bringing back, you know, to the season with that in mind, the defending national Yeah, champion? I mean, it was a rivalry. We, we split it. 
we lost over there. We won at home. Yeah. Uh, I think if if we would have made it to the final four, uh, we we would have had high chances of playing them in the yeah, in the, the championship game, game yeah. and that would have been for the ages. But I mean, yeah. it's coulda woulda shoulda. It's not gonna get you anything. Yeah, it's so, like that time uh, when LeBron that's James. That's what I'm saying. And like Kobe I'm, we, we're buckets. gonna work hard and and we're gonna <laughs> be in the same spot. Yeah. Hey, Francisco, we appreciate it, man. Uh, enjoy your time back home, and we'll see you when you get back to Omaha. All right, welcome back to Let It Fly Show. We're joined now by, of course, state champ at Millard North, St. Thomas, joining us here. How you feeling, man? I'm good. How are you? We're good. We're really good. Um, So just kind of walk us through for people that don't know. You obviously went to Loyola Chicago, and now you're making the move. How have things been? What you been doing? Um, Really? So I left Loyola Chicago, like, after the first semester, just due to, like, mental health reasons. So... Mm-hmm. And then I hopped in the transfer portal, and I actually got committed to um, Northern Colorado like two weeks ago. So mm-hmm. uh, I just built a good relationship with them and Coach uh, Corey Faringer. I mean, he was a coach at Western Nebraska, mm-hmm. and Coach Teddy Allen, who I used to train with uh, at Going Vertical with Adam Barnes a lot. So sure. we just built a relationship like that. And he was also roommates with my high school coach, Coach Ed Miller. So really, oh yeah, you're things at home, circle, bro. Things you good, circle, man. Things circle you're, back you're, around. It's weird, yeah, man. Good. Like two degrees of separation. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's well, good. How'd you end up choosing Northern Colorado? Why was that the the pick for you? Um, really, man, because COVID. I I never got it. Got to go on a visit, really, and so. I had to pick Loyola going like. So you never had a chance to go on official visit to Loyola. Wow, no, it's just like a virtual zoom, thing. Yeah, wow. Zoom okay. calls. Yeah, and uh, I actually got to when I got in the portal. I actually got to set up a, a visit with Northern Colorado, and that was my first school. And mm-hmm. I had other li- ones set up, but I fell in love with it as soon as I I was down there, and I got to play with the team a little bit. Yeah, and chatted up with them, and they have a guy from Nebraska named Connor Creech. Mm-hmm. I mean, he went to Hastings a year yeah. older than me, so like. Just uh, him being around me and just guiding me through, like, everything up there and showing me the ropes was is really all I needed. Nice. Hey, I kind of want to dive into Loyola a little bit. So, all right, boom, you win state, you graduate from high school, you get down to Loyola, uh, you get settled as a freshman. Um, kind of talk about that time that, um, like, that puts you in a situation to – uh, make you feel like, like what was that? What was that moment where you felt like, oh man, like I'm in college now and the grind of basketball is real. Um, I say, so I got there like on a Sunday. We moved into the the dorms and stuff. Look, he remember it. Next, <laughs> next day, first day, first day was yeah. It was right, yeah, right to it, right to it. We was in the film room. I remember. <laughs> First thing I did was uh, I'm leaning in my chair yeah. in the back, yeah. and he's like, sit up. Oh, I man. knew it was, it was go time right yeah, there. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, uh, like another player in the in the uh, film room had yawned, yeah. and he was oh. like, oh, no, we don't do that. Man. And man. then that's how I knew, like, the first day he was already on it. So, yeah. I mean, we had going into it, we had seven fifth-year seniors. Damn. Man. Um, seven. Seven. Old team. One guy, one guy that played um, – Two guys that played on that Final Four team. Yeah. We're still there. And so one guy that actually played in it, one had to – he was a red shirt, so he yeah. had to sit down. Mm-hmm. But one fresh – he was a freshman when he played in it. So Did they – did, did the, um, the the guys that were on the Final Four team, did they kind of, like, give you a heads up? Like, hey, like, coaches like this or this what it's like when you get here? Or was it like – what was the, the camaraderie like in the locker room? Um, Really, like, I didn't really know a bunch of the guys, like, coming into it yeah, because, sure. like – I mean, once I committed, like, they started following me on, like, all social media platforms. But, like, other than that, coming into it, I didn't really know anyone. And, like I said, Cannon, Cannon has relationships with yeah. everybody, man. He knows right. Porter Mosier. Yeah, I mean, he does. Sure. Creighton yeah. guy. Creighton guy, yeah. And yeah. Um, so I, I was getting recruited by him, talking yeah, to him sure. a lot. And then, I mean, you know, I don't know what was going on. He kind of maybe yeah. knew he was probably going to leave. So. Right. I was talking to, like, Drew Valentine a lot, the assistant. Yeah, yeah. And so right when he got that head job, he offered me. Yeah. And it seemed like it was just the right move for me. Yeah, okay. Mm. Go back to, and I told you when you came in earlier, I went back and watched the last five, six minutes of the, of the fourth quarter and the state championship game and then watched the overtime. And you had a couple of clutch free throws. Yeah. What do you remember most about the game? Uh, Crowd was rocking. Though. Really what I mo- <laughs> well, remember most about the game really is just like, well, first half – 
I mean, I'm coming off a game from we played Miller West, our our rival team, yeah. and I had 30 points. Like had, hoping, I was bro. on a I was on a high, just yeah. just going yeah. off. And so coming into the game, f- playing Bellevue West, I mean, I had broke the uh, 48 points in like the Metro Holiday Tournament. Yeah. And then the second game, I had a bad game against them at home, and we lost to them. So we're one and one at the time. Yeah. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna come out, have a great game, and just we go win the state championship. But actually, things went left for me. I had to like <laughs> I was I couldn't get the ball that was face guarding me. I couldn't get a shot off. I was frustrated. Mm-hmm. So if it really wasn't for Val, my teammates, yeah. and everybody like getting me out, like because I was going internal, they made me go external. Yeah. So really, just it's more to the game than just scoring. So. I ended the game with almost a triple double with 10, 10, and 10. So yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. and Miller North is not known for their defense. And I think that was one of the most high level, like, defensive yeah. games there was in the state. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, I feel like you guys should have had two state titles. <laughs> Do you feel like that? Like, mm. not just kind of like on some, like, Ah, they beat us. We should have won. I'm talking about like, do you think West was a better team then, or do you really feel like y'all lost the game? Uh, I really feel like we lost the game. I mean, um, our junior year, well, me Hunt, me Hunter, and Jaden, Jaden's two Jayden, year, yeah. junior year, we um, I mean, we're up 14, three minutes yeah, left, yeah. and Jaden, big key of our team, fouls out, and Hunter's playing on a bum ankle. Oh so man, nobody knew that like, though, huh? Nobody knew that, yeah. and. He really wasn't even supposed to play in that game, but he Dang. just, I mean, state, yeah, championship, state championship, you got to. You, you got to play. One more. And so. Bunch of turnovers. It's like, it's hard. Like, he couldn't bring up the ball up the court uh, all the time, so I had to help. And that's when my game really, really, like, really wasn't polished. All yeah, the way you like, wanted it to way, be. Exactly. I respect that. And so, I mean, I know I had a couple uh, turnovers that switched the game and yeah. whatever happened, but. I mean, that's what made me who I was today, yeah, and that's why sure. I, that's why I was in the gym every day after that. Yeah, you you were in the portal. Hunter was in the portal at the same time. Did you guys talk at all? Um, yeah, we talked a little bit about you know trying to come back, just trying to come back. Yeah, to, I respect to, that to, to <laughs> Omaha, but yeah, you know, just I just to, always told him like you gotta do what's best for yourself, and right. you know, just we we'll make it one day together. Right. But yeah. like, just do what's best for yourself and. You you got to go rock out somewhere. Yeah. Do you think um, – what's your perspective on, like, the local state schools in Nebraska, Creighton, UNO, UNL, like our big D1 schools? Do you feel like, from your perspective, that our schools here do a great job of recruiting in-state talent? Uh, or do you feel like they are? They just um, already had their spots filled when it came to you, from your perspective? Um. From my perspective, um, I kind of I, – I get both sides. I mean, I feel like we had a lot of guys getting recruited out of, like – I mean, like Max, Hunter, yeah. uh, Jason, Luke War, um, Chucky. All those guys had, I mean, offers to, like, Creighton, yeah. Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Um, I had an offer from UNO, was getting yeah. looked at by both of the schools. Out of, out of high school? Yes. Word. And it's just like – um, I think they do a good job, but yeah. it's just like um, I don't know if the kids. You can keep it real. It's just us here, bro. Uh, yeah, I don't look at I a guy like Reitzel, who I thought yes. could certainly in yes. a couple of years oh, be Charlie? a starter. Yeah, yeah, I thought like he could be local. He had to yes. go away all the way to Long Beach. Yes, now he's at Bama. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a guy that should have been exactly. back home. Recruited. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know because I mean I was part of their like Hunter's recruitment a lot, like just being around them. Sure, like I hear sure. phone calls and everything. Right. So like. I mean, I feel like the coaches build, like, really good, like, relationships yeah. with them. And it's, like, it's really, like, personal. It's, like, not, like, a business thing. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't – I don't personally, I don't know why the kids don't come back home. He but. about this close to getting it off. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I respect that. I'm just curious. How I'm would you curious. say – because you mentioned something interesting. That junior year, you your game wasn't where you wanted it to be. Yes. You worked hard. What, over the last couple of years, have mm. you developed? What have you worked on the most? Um – Really just, like, try to, like, build my guard skills up. Like, I mean, my junior year, I was, like, a 6'5", a kind of, like, like four man. And everybody played more knew four. It, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, um, I mean, if you want to play at the highest level, you got to have to have some – some guard skills if you want to sure, if you sure. want to be a three the or way the, ball, the, the way basketball is today. Exactly. I, I, exactly. It's positionless now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I mean, a lot of teams play positionless. Like going to right. Loyola, I mean, you're one, two, three, or four, you're a guard. So, right, right. I mean, just building All those swing guys. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. building those habits and getting in the gym, like I said, with Adam Barnes every day just helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Do you feel like um, two, two things? One, do you feel like you got a different chip on your shoulders, like you got something to prove, or are you just hooping and I'm just at the next school? That's my first question. And then my second one is, like, how do you define your journey right now? Like, how do you embrace that? Um, I really, I mean, I wouldn't say the chip is different. The chip is always the same on my on my shoulder from from day one. Right. But um, I think like my mentality has to like has to switch and be different. Like, these are my next two years of like college, and there's got to be the most the biggest ones. So yeah. you don't get I I get a second chance, so I can you never know if you get a third or not. Yeah, so. for sure. Got to make it the best, yeah. and really just, um, really just want people to like just to know, like, don't forget, like, about me. But like, that's why you're here, man. Exactly. We want people to know what's going exactly. to happen, yeah. exactly. For real. And like, that's, um, that's really it. Yeah. yeah last, right. last thing for me, I've never been to the campus, of Northern Colorado. Yes. I'm assuming it's beautiful. Yeah. It's everywhere in Colorado is beautiful. Is there mountains and all that stuff? Um, there's a lot of mountains. What coming town in. is it? It's in Greeley, Colorado. Oh, I've been to Greeley before. Yes, okay, yes. so that is yeah. That's yeah, so it's not He's never to the school. It's, it's not, not that school, like yeah, hundred thousand so. people. Not not yeah, too small bad. Town, yeah, thirty minutes from Boulder. We had some like good ice cream from downtown. Denver. Denver. Yes. Really you gonna yeah, try to make uh, some of the uh, Coach Prime games? Y'all that close? Um, I, we're like thirty minutes away. So I'm trying to I'm trying to go to see that Nebraska Colorado game. Yeah, it's sold out. That's gonna be fun. It's sold out. So, oh, yeah. oh, man, I, got, I got press pass. I'm going. Yeah, that's why it's sold out. He got the last ticket. <laughs> I, I, that's not true. Yeah, but that, that's gonna be awesome. It's gonna yes. be amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sam, we appreciate it, man. Thanks yeah, for having. Good luck uh, in Northern Colorado. Appreciate it. Thanks, my man. Good to see you. All right, we appreciate everybody who came on with us. Of course, catching up with Farabella was nice. Yeah, catching up with St. Thomas for me was Catching cool. up with St. Thomas. Cool first me. time I ever met him, I couldn't believe he was that tall. <laughs> I, mean, I knew he was tall, but I didn't realize he was that tall. And also uh, Derek Kellogg, the assistant coach for Creighton as well. Yeah. Real quick about, um, I want, I'm going to ask you NBA quick, but so this past week, yep. if you didn't see it, uh, Matt Rule was at the Lincoln Chamber, mm-hmm. and he spoke. And I always tell people, son of a preacher, man. He's got that in him. He just gives good speeches. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to read a couple of quotes. Yeah, go from ahead. This. It's just so good. There are no days off. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. We don't relax. Every single day our mission is to build something that lasts. That's what Coach Kellogg basically was talking about when right. he was on earlier. Those relationships. You can talk all you want about wanting to get revenge for something right. or you got to ch- – look, look forward. Right. Constantly look forward. Make right. yourself better day by day as the saying goes right. over at Nebraska. And then I truly believe the University of Nebraska deserves to have a program, a house that's built on a rock. Mm. You come in, you see other schools. They're very popular right now, making sweeping changes, and all those are quick fixes. It's like being built on sand. Now he is throwing yeah. just massive he, he, amounts. Yeah. He's speaking at Dion. He's he talking to Dion. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, look, I, Colorado and Nebraska already have a great rivalry. Yeah, they're gonna play the second week I'm, of the season. I'm going, and all this stuff, man. Look, this is bro, all like I'm, I'm going back to what I told you yeah. a while ago. That game mattered more to me. It's I think the game matters. Minnesota matters more as a program because okay. of it's the division and it's a conference game yeah, for, the fan base, for the fan yeah. base. For the fan base, Colorado. For the fan base, right? The, if they lose to Colorado right. for some reason. Exactly. It would devastate I'm the fan you. base. Right. And, it would spe- and speaking them. about Dion, yeah. when he had all those all those players leave, I feel like the connotation behind it when it initially came out was, "Oh my God, he's losing the program." Yeah. He wanted to do that. The he whole wanted. Time. That's what he wants to do. Exactly. Yeah. Nah, he's, I'm he'll, looking he'll, forward to he'll it, be man. Fine. This football season is going to be crazy. One last one. People come to me and they say, I really hope we're good this year. In my mind, I'm like, I really hope we're good every year. Dang. It's a good line. Yeah. It's a really good line. So, he, he I mean, and he's not saying anything to me. There's nothing alarming. Mm. Like, he's stamping on, like, yeah. we're going to turn around today. He's saying we're moving forth in the right. You got it. You got to. Yeah, yes, he's you got building to. a program. Everything you do I this year is for it, the man. next couple of years. Yeah, yeah, I can get with well, it. Well, yeah, you, you build, you build your house on a rock. I can get That's with what it. That's what you got to do. Uh, yeah. You picked, uh, real quick, you picked Golden State. It ain't over, bro. Over the Celtics in the finals. Golden State is down in their series. Yeah. The Celtics are down in their series. Yes. You still feel all right? I still feel all right. I feel like Golden State got another game. Okay. And then they're going to go to L.A. Well, they, they go to, so they won. They go to L.A. next. Right. You don't think L.A. puts them away in six? I don't. 
All right. I don't. We'll and see. It, we'll unbiasedly. see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll you know see what why? happens. Because Cause AD had a little hit, got hit in the head. Yeah. So if maybe he can't play us, I just yeah. think the Lakers finish him. Now, this is my case why. Yeah. This right here yeah. uh, is why I think Golden State going to win in seven. Okay. Steph Curry right now mm-hmm. is number seven, number 10 best player of all time. To me. For some people say that, yeah, sure. Yeah, I yeah. think he, he he understands. The problem is Jordan Poole's not playing worth anything. True. He's not getting a lot of help from anybody. I get that. That's the tough part about but it. I mean, Draymond so, can't score. I mean, sometimes Wiggins, you got to hope. Superman wear okay. a cape, man. Okay, okay put, put the cape on. There you go. All right. We, I, I, just I hope, can't wait to come just, back and I, talk about Thursday this. It's Thursday night we're taping this. I just hope <laughs> when I wake up tomorrow morning that the Celtics have lost and the Sixers are moving on to the, fi- the, the conference finals. That's, that's, that's a fun series. Oh, it's a very fun series. It looks like the Sixers are going to win it according to the momentum. I don't know. But then again, I don't no, I, no. I've, I've been here too many. I've been. I was here in. I was here in eighty. Yeah. I was here in eighty one. <laughs> I was here. In, I've been around this series. Right. Uh, special thanks yeah. to Herdad as always for putting us up. Uh, Pat Safford for producing the program, of course. Phil McClain putting the guest list together, you, doing Phil. that as well. It's on me today, Phil. And all our guests. <laughs> we appreciate Josh being close to being on time. Uh, we, Derek <laughs> Kellogg. We appreciate Coach for coming in. St. Thomas as well, and Francisco Farabello from Argentina. Josh, take us away. Hey, it's Josh Jones here with my man Michael Savino. You know how we do it. It's a Let It Fly show.